early on in the spring about adding the three senior corners and he talked mm. about the need to use the portal and make sure you guys got good fits. I'm just curious what you've seen specifically from those three guys so far. I know it's early still. Um, spring, but... What I've seen in the, the, the three transfers are just the, the, the veteran maturity, the, the presence, their presence of just understanding ball, playing in a lot of uh, big games mm -hmm. uh, against a lot of good competition. And they really have a feel for the for the game, uh, feel for situations. So those are some of the things that we were looking for. Just having some veteran guys, just have a mix because we have a lot of I have a lot of young DBs, a lot of young corners. So just having a good mix of veteran guys that they can kind of like uh, some of the younger guys can learn and they can help prepare them uh, for for their for their time. Sure. I'm sure it's a delicate balance when you're bringing new guys in and you've already got guys in the program who are working to earn a spot. Mm -hmm. What kinds of conversations did you have with guys like Alex or Samar, people who had played and, and maybe thought they would have a bigger role or, or just wondering what's going on when you're bringing new guys in? How did you handle that? Well, I'm always transparent with all my players. So every decision that I make, I'm all, especially like Alex. Alex is the leader of my room. So I, I communicated with him all throughout that whole process of bringing in new guys. And they understand that when four guys leave, you're bringing in four new guys. So um, some of the guys who left were veteran guys. So trying to just continue to have that balance within the room. Um, but understanding that even when you bring in new guys, they still have to earn uh, their position. And I've been transparent with them as well. You know, uh, the guys who are here, uh, you have to beat them out. So, uh, you know, and everybody in the room understand that. And I think just bringing in a whole bunch of new guys has actually elevated uh, some of the younger guys' game and allowed them to stay locked in into the details and stay focused. And it's really pushing everyone. It's, it's creating a lot of competition. So I really like where everybody is, is, is headed in, uh, in my room. So it's been good. Was it a situation where you knew this was a position you were going to have to address in the portal because of the guys leaving? Or was it just a matter of, wow, these guys are available, let's go after them once we saw the quality of players it was, out there? It was more so knowing that we have a lot of young guys and just having the balance of some veteran players. I just know how important it is to have guys in your room where you have a veteran leader. Um, yes. Alex is our leader, um, but I, I just like, just like I said, I'm, you're going to continue to hear me say balance. Um, and I think uh, it's been good for us. And everybody has embraced the, the new guys. And as the weeks go on, they continue to get comfortable. And um, I mean, it's, it's as if they've been around for, for a year or so, because I mean, I, I feel like I have a really close group. Um, hey, so how you, would you describe your relationship with Justin Clark, guy from Toledo, he coached, and then what do you kind of see that he can bring to this room? Justin, so our relationship, I mean, I, I coached him for four years. Um, I actually recruited him out of high school. I know his dad personally. So uh, I feel like we're pretty, pretty close. I mean, as, as much as you can, player coach. Um, I just know how he works. I know how he thinks. I know how he prepares. I know the athlete that he is. Um, and one of his strengths is, 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 is attention to detail and awareness of game situation. He understands spacing, formations. He's a smart player uh, outside of him just being a really good athlete. Um, so I, I'm really excited to have him. He's, he's a player that I trust because I've had him for a long time and I know him personally. I know some of the things that he can do to help this team. I'm guessing that prior relationship helped make his decision easier, but I'm curious, what kind of questions did those three guys have about you and the program? Um, I don't know if Justin had any questions because he known me for so long. Okay. And anytime he has an opportunity to leave uh, uh, Mac school and have an opportunity to play at a Power 5 school, Big 10, really good program and all of them have dreams uh, to go to the next level. This was a, a no-brainer for him, great opportunity. Um, Cedric Dort, 
I actually, uh, his mentor is one of my good friends. We were teammates in the NFL, uh, Abe Elam. Okay. So he, he does, he has, it's called Elam model and he, he kind of like mentors young men. He's also kind of like an agent and he pretty much talked to me about him, told him he had just entered the portal okay. and I trust his uh, eval and stuff like that. Really good character kid, um, played a lot of ball in the SEC. So that was kind of like my connection with him. Okay. Um, heard about Shaw through Fayon. Fayon Hicks told me about him, knew a guy, knew he was about to enter the portal. And uh, that's pretty much how I, 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 I was able to get to know them. Don't know what the questions they have about me, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, just still continue to get to know them, understand, especially the, the, the two, uh, Shaw and Cedric. Uh, don't really know them personally, but as time goes on, you know, understanding what they like, what their strengths are, mm -hmm. some of the things that we can do to get to get better. But I just like their mentality. I love just, I mean, it's, it's different when you recruiting high school kids and then you had these conversations with kids out of the portal who've played a lot of ball. It's, you know, they're very mature. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, I, I like, again, I, I like the balance. What is Chase Shaw's, what is Chase Shaw's skill set from what you've seen? Obviously, started was a big second team on Pac-12 last mm -hmm. year, so he's got experience, but what has stood out to you so far on the field? I like his mentality. So everybody, for the most part, when you hear me talk and you'll hear my players talk, they're always uh, talking about dog mentality because that's something that I preach. And as I'm watching his tape before he even uh, came to Wisconsin, I saw the mentality. I saw how uh, he was in your face. I saw how he played with a lot of confidence. Um, he has great feet. So, you know, you, you want to have that type of player in your room because it, <laughs> it's contagious. You know, him challenging, challenging receivers, challenging players within the room, and everybody's just gravitating to that mentality outside of me actually preaching it. So I love that part of him, of just being aggressive and competing and uh, just having confidence about himself. You could, you could, you could see it on the tape. You can tell, you can see when someone's just an athlete. But sometimes a guy who's just a great athlete, some of them's not always confident. But you can see that through him. So I, I love that about him. Do you know okay. how Sean and Fayon knew each other? What, what the familiarity was? No, I think it might have been someone that a mutual friend or someone that he knew. So, but he was the one who told me about him. You mentioned yeah. Alex earlier being the leader in your room because mm -hmm. he's the most experienced guy who was here last year. Yep. How did you want him to respond to bringing in three senior corners and what have you seen from him so far in practice? I've seen his game elevate to the next level. Okay. He's playing fast, he's playing smart. He's probably my smartest DB. He can play every position in the secondary. He's getting reps at nickel, corner, um, safety, because uh, he can absorb the, he can absorb that informa information. He's very coachable. When I see him out here in individual drills, he's actually taking that drill and applying it into a real ball. So I've just seen his game continue to elevate. Uh, and he's really helping bringing some of the younger guys along. But I feel like me being transparent with him about the moves that I'm making allowed us to continue to, to develop a stronger relationship because I'm never keeping anything from my guys. Uh, and, and he's another guy who's a very, he's a competitor, but I feel like the new guys has really helped push him. Beyond the, the four guys with experience, uh, are there some of the guys in the you know, second tier right now that have made jumps from last season and could potentially push them in your eyes? Uh, my whole room, I feel like, has gotten better. Um, Rico Holman, he's uh, 
playing well this spring. Amon Williams, who's a walk-on, who continues to uh, play well and make plays. He's actually leading the room in takeaways. Um, Max Lofi uh, was kind of like a tweener last year. He was like a nickel safety because we needed some help, some bodies over there. And he's transitioned back to nickel corner. Um, he's continuing to uh, elevate his game. Uh, really good athlete, has great feet. And we just continue to work on just his tempo, his control, just being able to control himself because he's so fast and so athletic. And once he can control himself, he's going to play even faster. So really like him. Um, who else am I missing? Al, Al, he's he's actually uh, getting better. He had his best his best practice um, last practice yesterday. Um, so a lot of the guys, again, some of the new guys is really helping to push guys. And every week, <laughs> again, I'm letting them know where they are. I had this thing that I did last week. I had every one of my players who came in to watch film with me. I wrote down all the corners' names on the board. And I said, list your top five based off of practice. And for the most part, all of them were saying the same guys. So that lets you know that, again, I'm letting, I'm putting everything out there. Guys know where they are, they're hearing it, and they're being, they're holding their self accountable and they're being honest. If they know that they haven't been playing to that level, they're not putting their name. So again, at the end of the day, when things are happening, we all are on the same page. It's, it's worked well for us. What would you say are your top slot guys you're evaluating? Obviously, you guys are rotating through a number of different players at all the spots. Mm -hmm. It seems like Justin's gotten some Alex. You mentioned Max. Yeah. Who would you say right now are kind of in the mix to fulfill that role since you need guys to step into that with Dean Lee? Well, the guys that's in it, so just like you said, a lot of them is rolling through. Um, I wanted all of them to learn the nickel position because um, that's the corner position. And then at times, um, mi mixing and matching in certain uh, defenses, allowing them to have that nickel skill set so you ain't always just playing man. So I wanted all of them to be able to learn a position. But as the, the practices go on, Yes, there are guys who are starting to separate themselves. So you look at, I'm, I'm looking at, you got Clark, Max Lofi. I moved Amon Williams in there. He's, he's playing well in there. Uh, I, I feel like his skill set fits what we do at, at nickel. Uh, Rico, he, he potentially can, can be a uh, nickel. And like I said, you had um, Alex play both positions last season. Um, so, I mean, I have a lot of different options. It's still early, um, but I think a, a lot of those guys are, are doing pretty well. Hank, last year, Jimmy played a lot of safeties. I think five guys he pretty much rotated through there. Mm -hmm. They're a little thin right now because of injuries. Mm -hmm. You mentioned Alex can play pretty much any position. If, if something happened where they're short on bodies at safety, is he a guy? And you could say to Jim, hey, if you need a body, you can play him because he can. we can trust him there? Absolutely. That was one of the reasons why we had him take some okay. safety reps because he can do it mentally. Uh, he can see formations. He can communicate it. Uh, so, yeah, that, that, that would be an option. But right okay. now, he's, that, he's my starting corner as of right now, and he's – you know, again, when I brought the guys in, I said, this is your job to win. You, you, I mean, you have it. So, and he's continued to elevate his game. So, okay. that's where he'll be. What do you think you just missed most from Dean from the cornerback position? What have kind of been your early thoughts of him as a wide receiver kind of trying to stop him now in practice and being on the other side? Uh, his, my early thoughts of him as a receiver? Yeah. Um, He's taking the same skill set that he had um, as a DB. He has really, really good feet. Um, he's very competitive, which he was when he was a DB. Uh, and uh, I mean, I, I gave him the nickname Scrap because he's real scrappy. 
And uh, I think he's bringing that mentality over to his room um, with the wide receivers. But, you know, it's, it's still a lot of things he had to work on because it's a new position. But because of his work ethic and um, passion and drive, uh, I, I think he's going to continue to elevate.